Here oh, we so go. Is being, is and being we live are live, me. Frank. We are live. So say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> there we are. Okay, there we are. Hey, everybody. It's 3 p.m. And it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. But in this case, not only is it time for dinner with Nanny Bubby, but it's time for barbecue with Frank A. Saul from A Taste of Brooklyn. So, hey, Frank, welcome. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure being here. Well, thank you. We're just so used to hearing your quips and your sense of humor and everything when we're, when we're on the air. I've got to uh, scroll through this for just a minute and um see who's see who's here everybody's going to be joining us in just a few minutes roseanne is here she says hi frank and marla um Lene is here um uh, and jennifer tuttle is here already so everybody is finding us everybody is excited to hear your story frank you fill us oh heather is here um you know you fill us with so much humor and so much delight um your pictures constantly being posted like nearly through our contest our cheese contest into a tailspin <laughs> but you quickly pulled back and you just started posting your pictures from when you were on the road and we all felt such pain for what you were eating out on the road so frank tell us your story well i started over driving the road driver you've been an over-the-road driver for how long for about 12 years and what did you do before that? Before that, I was a carpet installer. Oh, all right. All right. In Vegas or in Brooklyn? No, in Brooklyn, I was a carpet installer. But in 2002, I hurt my back and I had to go for lower back surgery. Uh -huh. So physical labor was out at that time. So I started driving and I've been driving ever since. Well, let me tell you who's saying hello. Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Bernay is saying it's so nice to meet you, right? Everybody knows Frank. Susan Conus Thomas says hello, Marla and Frank. So everybody is, is working it in. So you start this over the road driving and for the last 12 years, which means that you are crisscrossing this country over and over throughout a week or more, right? Yes, and by I'm the way, and what? I'm expedited. You're expediting. What does that mean, expediting? Tell that us. means I travel all 50 states. Oh, you do? Okay. So the first thing that I want to say to you, Lisa Dell says, hi, Frank. So the first, thing I want, the first thing I want to say to you, Frank, is in the year of COVID last year, if you were one of those over the road drivers in 2020, they kept supplies and food moving in this country, like all of us, truly owe you a debt of gratitude because that job um as much as the healthcare workers was so important in 2020 so on behalf of all the gatherers we've enjoyed your posts we've enjoyed your humor we've enjoyed many things about you but the gratitude that i know all of us feel for the fact that you were one of those drivers that kept this country moving really truly yes. thank you so much thank you yes, it's not a problem you know i do what i have to do to keep america moving yes keep america moving that's right yes. i'm going to ask you to do me a favor frank behind yes. you bright sun is coming through those blinds and if linda maybe could close the blinds or you could that will help us see your beautiful face and there we go now come forward there he is much better much better much better. Um, so everybody is is thanking you. Judy Wood says, uh, great to meet Frank. Tom Roberts is here. Tom, nice to see you. Thank you for joining. So Frank, first tell us about how you as an over the road driver suddenly became a chef, a cook, and published your own cookbook called The Taste of Brooklyn. My first job in Brooklyn was working for a local place preparing food. And what happened was everything that was in that place that we did, all the food preparation, I realized was very similar to what my mother and grandmother did. And my food career actually took off back then when I was 16. And on and off, but- So let me, ask, let me ask you this. I call you Frank Saul, but I heard you you call yourself Frank Solly. Are you yes. Solly or Saul? Solly. So your Italian heritage? Yes. Probably 
No. My father was Sicilian and my mother was Irish. Irish, okay. So did you learn to also cook Irish stew and, and everything else as well? No, unbelievable. But my mother and grandmother only cooked Italian style food. Oh, <laughs> you know, my, same thing with my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law uh, is like everything. My husband is Italian. My husband's father was Sicilian also. And when she married into that family, she didn't want to know anything about where else she came from. She just only wanted to be filled and full of Italian. And that's all she ever cooked was Italian as well. Yeah, back then, you know, my father, he made the rules and my mother had to cook what he, what he said. It was all Italian. Yeah, yeah. So, so Lisa asks, because you're of Italian heritage, do you call your tomato sauce or to, or gravy do you call it sauce or gravy okay that's an excellent question it is my sister calls it sauce my mother always called it sauce me personally i call it gravy. and what'd your I dad call it? call it sauce sauce and why do you call it gravy because i have so many different recipes i get them all mixed up and i wouldn't know which recipe is which if i didn't Oh, okay. All right. That doesn't make any sense to me, but I, if that's the reason, okay. <laughs> okay. So here you go. What did you make in honor of barbecue week? This Okay. For today, I chose, it's from my book. It's called Lemon Planks on a Stick. Oh, Lemon Planks? Is that what you call it? Yes. Le lemon Planks on a Stick. Okay. It's Plank Steak. Oh, Lemon Plank on a stick. Lemon flanks on a stick. Okay, I thought you said lemon plank, but you're saying flank as in flank. Yeah, okay, yes. go ahead. Yeah, so we thinly slice that, marinate it with lemon, garlic, rosemary, and thyme. Okay. And that gets marinated for about eight hours. You could go more. Uh huh. Fresh lemon juice? Yes. I don't put the lemon juice on until the end because in the marinating process, the lemon juice will cook the beef. It will. Isn't that yes. amazing? And in fact, if you take raw salmon, I learned that you can make like a salmon tartare by just marinating it in lemon and or lime juice overnight. The acid actually cooks the meat, right? Yes. Yeah. So, sure okay. does. all right. So you, so you have, so show us what you've done. Okay. So to get to that point, I take the flank steak, I lay it flat, uh -huh. take my knife, and I cut it lengthwise to flat into two equal size pieces, about a quarter inch thick. Wow. Okay. I have a question. Honestly, did you pre-cut that or did you just now cut that? I just cut that. That was the most smooth and beautiful use of a knife I think I have ever seen. Right, guys? <laughs> Like, have you ever seen anybody cut that smooth and fast? Like, I, I thought maybe you pre-cut. That was beautiful, Frank. What kind yeah, of a knife is Some of it's pre-cut, but not, not this one. Yeah, so, okay. what, so what kind of a knife is that that you're using? This? Yeah. A forged in fire. Oh, okay. I like it. All right. Yes. It's super sharp, and it's brand new. Maybe that's why. Maybe. Yeah, that, that was great. The, meat, the meat's a little frozen. Oh, and, and so that makes it easier to cut. Yes. Okay, and that is a tip, right? Like that's a that's a tip for cutting, uh, if you're gonna make carpaccio, always freeze the meat first or whatever you're gonna carpaccio. <laughs> for yes, it makes it easier for the knife to go through. And if you right. use a score in motion like I just did, it'll cut uh -huh. right through and erase. Okay, so let's see you do it again. Are you gonna cut it again? Yes, well, I don't have to, but yes. Okay. Be careful, no bleeding on the show, Frank. Yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay, all right. What's next? Roseanne says she's in awe and I'm saying hi to my mother who's joining today. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so once we get down to about a quarter inch thick, then I go one inch across the grain. Okay. Now, if you notice on plank steak, there's the grain that's running this way, I'm going to cut one inch strips this way. Got it. Okay. Thank you for showing us the grain. You're welcome. So I'll cut that one inch strips. Okay. 
And you got your cheese basket yesterday, right? Yes, it didn't actually come in a basket. It came in a styrofoam box. Yeah, yeah, because it's got to travel across the country. Come on, you're a trucker, you know that. <laughs> in 129 degrees, by the way. Yeah, so once we cut the one inch strips, this is what it looks like. Okay, perfect. Quarter inch thick. Yep. Then we're gonna marinate this. Six cloves of garlic that we're uh, gonna mince. Mm -hmm. One and a half tablespoons of fresh rosemary. That's beautiful. That's rosemary, incredible. We have fresh thyme leaves. A tablespoon of fresh thyme. Okay, beautiful. The rosemary and the thyme neck is chopped. Uh huh. The lemon. I already zested these lemons. Uh huh. But I do have ones I can zest if you want me to show you how to zest a lemon. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so Frank, just just show, just turn your the phone just slightly so it'll cut off your shoulder. But we just need to see more of the food. There you go, hun. That way we see the counter. That's okay. Perfect. So two two fresh lemons. We're uh -huh. gonna just zest it only. Just right over the top of the meat. Well, that's gonna go inside a plastic container. Okay. So you're gonna zest, but what are you zesting into right now? Nothing. Nothing, just on top of the board? Okay, Here, here's the controversy with, with zesters. I see everybody on TV using this the wrong way. Okay. Most people take the lemon, put it on top and do this. That is not, that is not how you use a zester. You are so right. The correct way is to put the zester on top, zest it, and you can see it catches all the zest. Yes. See? Genius. And so you've been watching me zest incorrectly, right? And apparently Roseanne has been too because she just said Frank zests the way I do. But apparently I do not know how to zest, but I do now, right? It's okay, everybody has their own way. Well, no, I, I mean, it's genius what you're doing. Yeah, you see, it just clicks on the top of that. Yep, gotcha. And you don't, you don't want to zest too much because if you go too far into the white, it gets Right, bitter. the pith is very bitter, right? Yeah, it's very bitter and we don't want that. No, we just want the sweetness of the zest. Yes. Of the so oils and the lemon. Yes. And when you now, everybody's lemons, impressed with the zesting tip, Frank. Thank you. When yeah. you get lemons, if they're not organic and they're store bought, make sure you wash them under warm water as they put a wax coating over it. Yes. Or, of course, Nanny Bubby's favorite thing to do with especially the citrus, hey, Teresa, is to put, um, to spray them with food grade hydrogen peroxide and really clean everybody's hands and everything else off the lemons. Yes. Especially if you're zesting in lemons, orange, limes, and if you ever zest grapefruit, which hardly yes. does. So once we have the lemon zest done, we're yep. going to take a quarter cup of olive oil, extra virgin. Yeah. That's going to go inside the bowl. Uh huh. That's a quarter cup. Okay. In goes the beef. Yeah. So you're not worried about the zest in the marinade, just the juice itself. Correct. The zest okay. won't have no effect except the okay. flavor. Yep. But the juice will cook the meat. Okay, gotcha. So once that's done, then we can go ahead and bash six cloves of garlic. Okay. Now, from that batch, I already had garlic in there, so I'm not going to be bashing this garlic. I could reuse that one. Okay, but show us with one what you do when you say bashing it. Tell us what, show us okay. exactly what that means. You take a clove of garlic, you put it on the on the board, put the knife over it, and bash it. Okay. <laughs> and then yeah, you mince it. And then you mince it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Or you could take the cheap way out or the shortcut and use a, a garlic crusher. Yes. Well, can I tell you, I would never use a garlic crusher and then go figure Yotam Otolonghi uses a garlic crusher all the time. And he says, don't even worry about it. They work just fine. And now you're, so 
after you've minced it, what was that move you just made, Frank? I put the knife on the board and I pushed down and I slid the knife across to make all the garlic flat, which crushes it even further. Ah, lovely. So you, and the you don't really have to work the, the juice, knife too much. And the juice from that garlic doesn't get more into the board than it does into the bowl? It does, but how much garlic can you possibly lose in, in the board? Uh, sometimes you want to I mean, lose a little. Okay. It, it flavors the board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Lisa says that this is so amazing. Her mouth is watering, and Roseanne said, "Great tip." Um. There you go. There you yes. go. I love it. Okay. So once that's done, then we put in the thyme. We do a tablespoon of thyme, uh -huh. and that we chop it. You mince always, it. Always pull against the stem. And yep. it instantly removes it. Yeah. Quick, quick little trip there. Yeah. Chop it. <laughs> that goes in. And then fresh rosemary. We're going to have a tablespoon and a half on that. Okay. The rosemary now, Frank, let me ask you your policy on these herbs. So I, I haven't bought herbs in a long time because as you know, I've been growing my own. But when you buy herbs, and I know the ones that you bought because they're in those little plastic containers. Yes. Do you wash them as you put yes. before you use them? Okay. Yes, I wash them. I put them back inside the plastic. Sometimes I'll put a napkin in there if I'm going to yeah. store it. Yeah. And that'll hold for a couple of days. Or right. you could take it and put it right into a cup of water and leave it on the, the windowsill. Yeah, I can't do that. In my kitchen, for whatever reason, the heat or whatever, the windows, I've got a lot of sun in here, but they don't hold up. They they wilt. So I do yeah. have to put them in the refrigerator. And I always wash them and I put them in, um, in a uh, paper towel. It keeps them damp and put them back in the... In the um, uh, container. So Judy Wood says that she needs this recipe, all her favorite herbs and seasonings, and Frank is going to go into gather and post the recipe when we're all yes. done. Right, Frank? A, matter of, a matter of fact, you could find the recipe posted on my website, it tasted brooklyn.net. And that and among other recipes, you could find there. Now the website is new. So there's not too many re recipes on there. But Yes, you can find it at tasteofbrooklyn.net. Okay, so let's talk about the cookbook. Let's talk about. So when did you, so did you start cooking in Brooklyn when you were a kid? Is that your story, or what is your story about what led you to a cookbook, Frank? My mother and grandmother always cooked, and I was always in the kitchen working with them. So I picked up a lot from them. And then when I started working in the culinary industry, I obviously learned a lot. And most of my, my training is autodidact, which, which is self-taught. So in 2013, my daughter was born. And on the very day that she was born, while I was sitting in the hospital holding her, it was always a dream of mine to publish a book. So I made, I made my decision right there and then that I was going to make it happen. And yeah, it was tough. It was tough, but I made it happen. Now I'm working on the second book. Oh, really? Yes. And so tell us this journey. You said it was tough. What was the toughest part about, and does your daughter know, did you, did you dedicate that book to her? I did dedicate the book to her. I'm not sure if she knows or not. She's in New York with the mother and uh -huh. the mother and I, we don't, we don't speak to each other and between court issues and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get to see my daughter. So Unfortunately, it's a sad story, but yeah, it's the truth. Well, listen, you're not alone. Many people have had those circumstances, but we all wish for you a healing, both with the mother and so that you can see your daughter for sure. Yes. So, so tell us what was so hard about writing the book, Frank. Coming up with recipes, uh, that, that was the hard part. I mean, not really that hard, but doing the research, testing them, getting them right. Uh, 
between that being on the road, not having much time to write, it's just a real hassle. I mean, you know, and then you got to eat every, every recipe that you mess up, you got to sit there and eat it. <laughs> so um, one of the things that, that I struggled with when I first started, you know, putting recipes on paper, I dreaded it. I was like, oh, when we were doing my website, the person that was helping me said, you've got to, you know, write some recipes and put it in. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. But I knew I had to. And when I started writing, I just, I loved it. I loved writing recipes. I couldn't believe it. I thought, how have I never written a recipe? But what I found to be the hardest is the point is coming up with a format that I could continually lived in. Did you find it difficult to, to figure your format so that every, every one of your recipes mirrored the other in terms of format? Yes. As a matter of fact, a lot of the recipes, you know, in, in order to write a new recipe, I use a lot of the older recipes that I have and I branch off a lot. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, a, it's, a real, it's a real good, interesting way to, to write. And when you get enough of recipes, you know, just keep saving them and saving them like I did. Now, when I wrote this book, it's actually the second time I'm writing it because the first book was on my computer and my ex has the computer and I don't have the recipes on you. Oh my so God. 5,000 recipes I had to rewrite. And oh, it, took, right. it took me over, yeah, it took me over seven years. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the, the, the first cookbook was supposed to be published a few years ago, but she disappeared with the computer and all my, the manuscript was just gone. So oh, I'm I, so sorry. That's devastating. Well, good for you for literally making it happen again. Cause that, yeah. that's, that's a lot to overcome. 5,000 recipes, Frank. It's a lot, but they're all tasty. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so season that with salt and pepper. And now this goes in the refrigerator. You mix it up. It goes in the refrigerator for six to eight hours. Okay. After you take it out, you put them on skewers, as I did here. Uh-huh. And then we have a whole bunch of them that we're going to throw on a barbecue, on a grill. And they're only going to take three to five minutes because they're so thin. And once they're done, we're going to cover it, kind of tent it with aluminum foil. Now, I know once I put the lemon juice on, you can't have the aluminum foil touch it because no. The, no. The, lemon, the lemon and the foil. Yes. Yes, it will give you a reaction. So you got to tent it. Okay. All right. Let me ask you this. Do you always soak your skewers when you know you're going to be putting them on a barbecue? Wooden skewers? Yes, always. All right. Otherwise, they'll burn. But in this case, I do salt them, but today I do not because they're only going to go on the grill for five minutes and they're not going to burn quickly. Okay. So I have a question for you. Lisa wrote, is this recipe like broccoli? That's, she said her father may, used to make that all the time. I'm unfamiliar with broccoli. It's B-R-A-C-I-O-L-E. Brajol. Brajol. Is it similar to Brajol? Brajol, Brajol is a rolled piece of meat. Okay. Th right. these, are, these are skewers. See? Okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah, Brajol I is rolled and then it's braised in a tomato sauce. Oh, that's, how, and when you roll them, what do you put in them? What do you For put in them? I put a lot of stuff. I put prosciutto, I put breadcrumbs, parsley, garlic, cheese. And each, sometimes I put different stuff and it depends on you know, wh whatever I have on hand. And, there you go. All right, yeah. Lynette says that's what she was thinking, that uh, that has an egg in it, she said. The brujol, you put, I guess you put the egg in it to hold it together. Okay. Um, All right, are you I'm getting a 15% battery. Uh -huh. So I may have to change the battery. Not battery, so, you just have to plug it in. Yeah, plug it in. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to put it on the grill. Well, if you've only got 15% battery left, what are you going to do? Put them on the grill and it takes five minutes. Yeah. Okay, and then come back in and plug it in? 
There we go. Yes. Okay, Linda, if you if the battery drops, you got to bring it back in and reconnect. You got that? I got gotcha. you. I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna So just telling you everybody, Frank and I like didn't get Zoom connected until three minutes before we hit the air. He really had trouble. So he's not as good on Zoom as he is on a barbecue. But Linda came to his rescue there and really helped. You could say that again. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, there's, oh my gosh. Okay. A little hot out there for that cheese. Hopefully it's sitting in a basket of ice, right? It's got some shade, yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so, so the grill, usually I would set up an indirect grilling, but for this, it's just in the center because it's only going to take five minutes and then we're going to take them off. Okay, Linda, can you turn the camera so we see more of the grill and less of Frank? Yeah, less of me and more of the grill. There you go. There you go. So, Frank, do you live here in Las Vegas or do you live somewhere else? Where do you live? I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. And how I did you happen to find Nanny Bubby? How did you find me? One of the one of my friends on Facebook sent me an invite, oh. and I I accepted the invite. And I've been watching you ever since. Oh my God. Well, you're a joy to have, really. You're an absolute joy. Yes, these are ready to turn already. Okay, careful your and fingers. This, there. And this smells incredible. I bet it does. And this does have the lemon juice marinade down. How long do you leave the lemon juice on it? Just right before you throw it on the fire? or No, the, the lemon juice doesn't go on until after these come off the grill. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, this literally takes five minutes to cook. It sure does. Yeah, and then these, these are absolutely delicious. Now it depends on how you like it. I like my medium rare, which is about 140, 130. Uh -huh. But so, I'm, isn't it hard to get an internal temperature of meat that is that thin? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so what you want to do is you want to look at it and you're looking for the color when it starts to char around the edges. And when it starts to get that gray color, you want to take it off because it's going to continue cooking once I cover it in the aluminum. Right, exactly. And, and Linda Michelle says, good going, Frank. Thank you very much. Yeah, so these are almost done. Okay. I mean, it's that simple. This is like one of the simplest recipes I've ever done. And the, it's packed it with flavor. It's great. It's absolutely it's fantastic. All right, these are ready to come off. Okay, let's take them off. And then Linda, when you get back in the house, will you plug the phone in so we don't yes, lose them? All righty. Camera girl, Linda. <laughs> My Las Vegas photographer.com. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Here we go. I mean, doesn't that look delicious? Oh, for sure it does. Actually, it's making me a little hungry here. Yeah, these are just packed with lemons. I mean, would you, would you like uh, French? Okay. okay, back in we go. Thank you. We are loving this, Frank. Let me tell you, this is. <laughs> is this Linda in the bikini? No, that is Priya Ray. Bye. Oh. Sorry, I do it okay. too. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Cute bikini. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh God. Okay. Judy Wood says she can smell it over the internet, and so can I, Frank. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Hey, Linda, no, we'll you plug in? Did you plug in, Linda? I'm, I'm on. We're in the process here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay. So once these come off the grill, take the lemon. You're going to juice the lemons right over the beef. Uh-huh. Make a tenth out of the aluminum. Okay. And make sure it doesn't touch the beef and just let it sit there for three to five minutes. Okay. The meat absorbs the lemon juice. 
and the, it'll finish cooking underneath the, the aluminum. So did you put like salt and pepper, garlic salt? Well, you don't need garlic salt because you have so much garlic. In the marinade, in it. I did put salt and pepper. Uh -huh. I do not put no salt and pepper on this yet. You can put that on at the table because you don't want to make them too salty. Right. Okay. So, All yeah. right. Let me ask you a question. We know that A Taste of Brooklyn is your first cookbook. How many copies? How many copies have you sold? It's not in stores yet. It'll be in stores by the end of the year. Okay. All right. So if, if somebody wanted your book, how would they be able to get it? Uh, right now, there's a link that's on my website, thetasteofbrooklyn.net. Dot net. You could go there, but until it's in stores, there's no link to, to the book. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, okay. yeah right now, they, they're still doing the design and, and whatever and else they do. Who is publishing it? It's going to be Page Publishing. Amazing. So you were able to get a publisher. That's amazing. Yes. And how did you do that? What was that process like? It was pretty simple. I mean, I have a friend that used them and his book came out phenomenal. Uh -huh. um, I have another friend, she published with them. And if theirs turned out good, I figured mine has to turn out good. So I used them. Well, good for you. That's awesome. You. Um, Lene says she definitely wants your book. Judy Wood says, put it on Amazon as soon as you can. And I want one too. I want a signed copy. Oh, there he goes. He's eating it. <laughs> you know what? If so all of our gatherers buy, buy the, when it comes out and they want to buy it mm, and they buy it directly from you, will you send them a signed copy? Yes. Okay. To get a, when the book is published and it's in stores, I'm trying to get a book signing for here for Las Vegas. Oh. Um, Right now, that everything's in the works. Well, I want to host it for you. I want to host a book signing for you. Yes. Now we're going to season with salt because it needs just a little salt. Okay, you got it. Okay. And you're working on your second book? Yes. Okay. So let me ask you this question. This is like, um, Teresa says she wants a signed copy too. So we got a lot of gatherers. The, we're going to be your first, your first purchasers. So let me ask you this, when you're out on the road and you're driving mm -hmm. and you're eating those terrible lamb chops, <laughs> is there, yeah, or, wasn't that awful? Oh my gosh. I mean, we really felt for you. We really felt for you. What, I was embarrassed to post it. <laughs> well, it was real, my darling. It was definitely real. But like, do you have favorite places that you go? Do you, do you pack yourself a box what what do you do how do you eat on the road when i'm when i come home for home time i try to cook as much as i can to bring with me but because it's on a, on a, a small refrigerator in a truck i can only go for three or four days right so after that so what do you I, take what do you take with you for three or four days what is it that you make for yourself a lot of pasta uh, mm -hmm. that, that's just my background uh -huh. uh, stuff like this skewers i take a lot of sandwiches for lunch and what kind of sandwich what's your I favorite try, when i'm on the road i try to eat as healthy as i can right good and do you have a favorite truck stop that you eat at or do you have a favorite like cracker barrel restaurant in a certain city like what what do you what do you love anything if i have to eat out i try to go to like cook's country or maybe denny's and that, that's like the, the quickest and, and the, the most respectful food. Other than that, I don't respect any of the food out there at all. And what is Cook's Kitchen? I've never heard of that. That must be somewhere other than here. It's like a, a country a country inn. Okay. All right. Like a country or a country pride. Yeah. Okay. And how long have you lived in Vegas? I moved out here in 2009. Mm -hmm. Moved back to New Jersey with my mother in 2013. Came back here in 16 and I've been here since. Okay, so five years. Mm -hmm. Good for you. And do you own your own rig or do you work for, like, I don't know how OTR works actually. I don't own my own rig. I'm a company driver. Uh -huh. I work for Schneider National. Uh -huh. And they're a respectful company. I like them. They Good. take care of me. It's rough on the road 24 hours a day, but. 
Well, I'll tell you a little secret just between you and me. But before I started cooking, I actually owned a fleet of 17 trucks myself. Oh, wow. Yeah, I started the mobile billboard industry here in Las Vegas, and I ran the largest, most successful mobile billboard business until I sold it in 2013. Oh, so, wow. trucks to cooking. We both have the yes. same story. It's a weird combination, but, you know, to, to eat that truck stop food every night, it'll kill me by the time I'm 60. Yes, it will. <laughs> I mean, you saw what that pork chop looked like. That was a disgrace. Oh, my God. I mean, we were just like, we didn't know whether to laugh or cry for you. Honestly, it was just terrible. Oh, believe, me. believe me, I was crying. I bet you were. But I would encourage you to do this. When you get back on the road, I mean, all of us gatherers love to follow you. And by all means, you know, if you have a good meal posted, if you have a bad meal posted. I mean, we love seeing what you're doing out there. And you shouldn't feel ashamed. We're a very loving community. Look at everybody who showed up to see you today. And, you know, you follow us, we follow you. We're all in this together, applauding and encouraging everybody. So thank you. Know, take us with you on the drive. Thank you. Uh, yes, I will. If the recipe looks that bad, I'm not going to share it because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to betray that, that image. Oh, well, <laughs> I know, but you, you could say, I ordered this and this is what it looks like. I'm not eating it would be fine. <laughs> I ate that great pork chop. Yeah. Was it lamb chop? It was a lamb chop. It was lamb chop, yeah. It, it, it was yeah. great. Oh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, it was, was great. Bad. I mean, I don't know how you get a, a lamb chop great, but it was great. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so let's do this. Is there anything else that you'd like for us to know? Would you like to come back and next, you know, and down the road here in the next couple months? And yes, I would love to. Let's let's show another recipe that was just a brilliant recipe, an easy recipe, right? Yes, this this one was easy. The, yeah. the next one will be a lot a lot more in in depth, and it'll be from the book as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe, maybe I'll just sell the book. <laughs> you can't. So do you want to work with me? And um, let's, uh, I'm going to mix up the names of everybody to, that's going to win the contest. Yeah, right, right now, you know, right now being on the road, um, looking for a studio. So within the next, maybe next year, I'm going to have a Taste of Brooklyn studio up and running. And it's going to be fully customized and hopefully everything will work out. What do you mean a studio? A kitchen studio where I go in, everything is recorded, and everything's going to be filmed, and it's going to be a complete filming studio. Well, that's amazing. Are you already building it? No. Uh, right now, I'm looking for a location. Oh, okay. Well, I'm looking for one, too. So I'm getting, getting ready to demo my kitchen and rebuild it, and so I have to have a studio, too, before I can do that. So... I'll keep you up to date what I find. Maybe we can share a studio. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Are we ready to pick this week's winner? Did I win? No, you did not. <laughs> no, that's because nobody hashtagged me. That's because you put in a picture that was trademarked from your cookbook and it didn't qualify. Yes, I did. I cheated. Yes, you cheated, but it's okay. We all got a big laugh out of your cheating, but next week, no more cheating. Okay, so I'm going to circle these around, and I can't look because sometimes the names flip over. So just say when to stop and pull. Stop and pull. Okay. Oh, my God. Lene wins again. There you go. Lene, do you hear that? So Congratulations. Lene yeah yeah boy this one's lucky you know she's got first grandma here um so lene because you're still on i think lene's still on is she still there yeah maybe so here's the question lene do you want to cook with me next week because i found out like a couple a couple times we did cocktail winners and they they were um camera shy they didn't want to be on camera unlike you frank who couldn't wait to get here <laughs> So let's see if Lene is there. Okay. She says, wow, I can't believe it. So Lene, do you want to cook with me live next Wednesday? Your favorite um, 
So she, Teresa says she wished she had truck stops they, like they have in Italy. That would be fantastic, right? So Lene, what's your choice? Are you going to just send in a recipe for me to cook or you want to cook live with me on Zoom? Let's see what she says. We've got this delay, so we have to wait for the delay. It's kind of crazy. Let's see what she says. And anyway, we'll see what she says and we'll set it up for next week. So I, next week I am cooking for my husband's birthday and I'll be coming up with recipes for that. I'm definitely going to do uh, Roseanne's uh, marinated fontina and rosemary sticks. I oh, love that good. appetizer. Yeah. And um, I, so I'm starting there and I'm going to look through some of these other recipes that you guys have all posted in gather. So keep them coming. In fact, Give me some great, you know, Tommy, it's really clean and he's watching his weight. Let's see. She's not sure let she said yet. She says, can I let you know in a day? So yeah, Lene, you can make a, you can make a decision. And of course, where you're going to be on Wednesday. So if you have any ideas or recipes for me to, I love actually in Teresa's cowboy, um, cowboy caviar, um, might be a really great side dish for what we're doing for the rest of the family as well. You know, for me, it's like I've got a vegetarian, a pescatarian, someone that only eats meat. And, you know, it's like, they, but whoever comes through that door, I have to have something for them to eat. So it's always a challenge for me when I have a family dinner. But I'm definitely going to um, use my sauce that I made yesterday, which is delicious, I can tell you. <laughs> and, um, and that's it. So any last words, Frank? No, that's it. Just uh, look out for my cookbook and hope to see you again. Yes, we'll see you Monday. And when do you go back on the road? Tomorrow morning. Oh, my gosh. You've only been home for a day. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, you yeah, know what? That's, that's the life. That's the life. But can I just tell you, thank you for taking the time in your one day to be here with all of us. Preparing food, preparing food like that ahead of time takes a lot of thought because you have to have so much prepared and ready to go and you think through the stages. I know what it takes and that you took your brief 36 hours that you were going to be home to spend that time with all of us. We really appreciate it, Frank. We all adore you. You, you. are adorable and precious and talented and we all wish you nothing but success. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're very welcome, Frank. All the best. And guess Thank what you. we get to say together? Ready? On the count of three. Oh, Roseanne said before the count of three, she said that she, you've, that she has already copied the recipe for Frank's website. We'll post it in albums with his video link and it's copied and it's already in gather. So Frank doesn't have to post anything. He can just get himself ready to go back on the road in the morning. So you're good, Frank. And everybody has the rest. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roseanne. Thank you to all the gatherers who came today to meet Frank in person. What a joy. We almost didn't make it, Frank, but thank God for Linda. We made it. We made it happen. Yeah, we made it happen. I knew we would. All the best on the count of three. One, two, three, go out and bread, bread, love, bread, like bread love like butter. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Bye. Bye bye. Enjoy. You too, Frank. Nice to meet you. You too. Bye, Danny. Bye. <laughs>